Are you asking yourself this question, is networking a waste of time? I think a lot of people ask themselves this question because it is quite hard to get right with a lot of business happening through networking though it's worth learning a good method to make it work i am going to share some tips with you but first i'm going to deal with the myths i have a feeling that you might be believing some of the common myths out there and they actually stop us from good networking the common myth number one is that networking is for people who enjoy talking to strangers, enjoy going out there. And if you, if you yourself, if you are a person who, like me, doesn't really like going out and doesn't like talking to strangers, and you think that maybe networking is not for you, common myth number two is during networking, we must make interesting conversation. That is also not true. And a third myth, build rapport. That mystical rapport. You have heard about it, haven't you? Mystical rapport, you need to build it in order to get anything done. But how and what, what to exactly to do? What does it actually mean? If you have dealt with these myths yourself, I have got a little bit of answers. They don't work. What works is making yourself clear, following a precise process, putting your business thinking in as it is business networking, and most of all, making it easy on yourself. If you are going to perceive networking as something, as something that's really difficult to do and really boring and not for you at all, then you will not want to do it again. And networking only works when it's done again and again and again. And the fifth one is waiting. I think networking falls apart for most of it when we wait for the other person to do something or we wait for something to happen. What is that networking? Why is it not working? Why are we waiting? Nothing's happening. And that's a very important part of my method. Number one making yourself clear. Why is it so important? The first point of my method, which got developed over years and years of, of trial and error, is making yourself clear. It all started when I had to network for an innovation company in the city of London. And I was sent out to network with something that people couldn't quite understand. And I networked and networked. I joined all the organizations, the morning ones, the lunch ones, the evening ones, and I networked three times a day, every day. I wasn't getting much out of it at all. I discovered that it is about people understanding what you do. In my case, it was innovation. It was difficult to understand anyway. And it was privacy software in the year 2011, when no one was caring about privacy and everybody was sharing, me talking about, about uh, protecting your identity online just wasn't registering at all. And this is how I understood that I cannot just go and say, hello, we've got software that protects you. Because people say, oh no, we don't understand technology. Hmm, and they switch off. Have you ever had this when you explain what you do in networking and people switch off or they say, mm, I don't really understand what you are saying. Oh no, we are not technical. We're not going to do that. This is how I came up to the, to the conclusion that making yourself clear, making clear, making it clear what your offering is as a company, as an individual is the most important thing. And this needs to be written up before you go anywhere. You really need to work on your pitch before you start networking. And you need to do it in two sizes. Why two sizes? Because the organized networking, the one that you pay for and become a member, they have a 60 second 
slot for you to explain what you do. And after 60 seconds, they cut you off. So if you haven't told people what you do in 60 seconds, you can't go on and writing up your pitch, rehearsing it and then memorizing it so you know how long it takes is very important. This you need to do before you go anywhere. I cannot overemphasize this, this must be done. The other size for your networking pitch is for networking at any point, because networking can be done anywhere if you know what you're going to say. So what I recommend is to rehearse, write and memorize your pitch in 60 seconds, a full size pitch and also a 20 second pitch for all the occasions at which you can tell people what you do and it would be a wasted opportunity if you didn't but you're thinking are you going to be talking for too long and they're not going to be paying attention so prepare yourself a pitch in two sizes a 60 second one a 20 second one and then follow a process why do we need a process because it's business networking the biggest mistake i see people make is that they think, or maybe you think, that networking is just networking. Now, networking is social networking and business networking. Mixing social networking with business networking causes all these problems that we have, all the lack of results. For business networking, we need a precise process. And in that process, before we go, there are five steps of it, Five steps, first step before you go, set your strategy. Where you're going to network, who you're going to be talk talking to, how long you're going to be talking to, what you're going to be getting out of it, how long you're going to be in an event, how many people, how you're going to follow up. Set that before you go. It makes it much easier on yourself to know what you're going to be doing. Now. I'm saying this from my background. My background is in the performing arts and having been a soloist opera singer on stage and having been a clean comedian in business events, I know perfectly well that it is your show and it needs to be prepared. Every element of the show needs to be prepared and memorized before you go anywhere. If that's not done, then you cannot have a good result. So I treat networking as my show and I follow a very strict business process. Preparing and rehearsing, preparing your speech, uh, preparing your pitch in two sizes is number one of the process. This you do in advance, not on the bus to the event, not when your computer is heating up to <clears throat> connect. It needs to be done much earlier because you need to be comfortable with it. When you have a really good pitch, you feel different, you feel more confident, and then it's easier to meet people in networking and it's easier to present yourself and you know how long it takes and you know that you're going to get everything in so you don't get flustered that, oh, I forgot this, mm, I should have said that. You've got it all prepared, this number two of the process. Number three is to listen. Networking is not just broadcasting what you do. Otherwise, it would be called broadcasting, but it's called networking because you need to listen to the other person. You are creating connections and you're creating contacts. So listening to what the other person does when they talk, while they're talking is incredibly important. Are you thinking that while other people are talking, you are going to be thinking what you're going to say next? That is the most common mistake. Really listen to what the other person does. You will then know, is it worth networking with them? Is that person good for your network? Remember, you're building your network. That's what you're doing in networking. You're building your own network. And that's, not, that's how you need to know every person in your network, what they do. So listen, don't skip that element. Number four, ask. Asking is difficult, especially if you are an introvert like me. Asking is difficult, or maybe if you're English, asking is even more difficult. It is not a culture in which we ask. You need to ask 
for what connections you want to get from the other person. You need to engage with the other person rather than just to say what you do, listen to what they do and then say goodbye. Have you done that? Have you done that? That was the moment why the networking didn't work. You need to say what you are expecting. I'd like to be introduced to these people. I'd like to be connected with those businesses. Do you know someone who does this? That's the element of asking. Number five in the process is following up in the right way. Now, how to follow up? How to follow up? It's an art in itself. Have you done this mistake that after a really good networking meeting, you send an email with everything that you need to say and the link to your website? Have you done that? If you have, that's why the networking didn't work. No one wants to read that. That's really bad news, but I had to give it to you. No one wants to read your material. People are networking. They want contacts. They want connections. They don't want to read your material. So in the step five of my method, you need to agree that you're going to meet. And when you meet, then you're going to network properly. And in that second meeting, not in the first meeting, in that second meeting, you are going to be building the rapport. So what I do, I say what I do, I listen to what the other person does, I ask for connections, and then I ask, could we meet for a networking coffee in which it would be 60 minutes, half of it would be for you to explain more about your business, half of, the, half of it would be for me to, to explain my business, and then we could focus on finding connections for each other. Would you be interested in doing that? And in that first meeting, in that networking situation, a situation I already agree to have a proper networking meeting. In the follow-up email, I just confirmed that we agreed to meet again and that we're going to have that networking coffee. What is the date that is suitable for you? That is my follow-up. And this is when I get it done. I get a 100% follow-up, 100% result on that every time because I agree to meet and continue already in that first conversation. So this process, if you follow talking to every person, you're going to get results. Number three, now step number three in, in becoming a pro network and putting your business thinking in. Why is that important? Because of the difference, which I mentioned earlier about social networking and business networking. We are in business networking here. That's why at every step of the process, you need to behave in a business way. So do not, if you feel this is a lovely person, I'm going to have a great networking. Don't start talking about things that are not connected to your business. Every time in those conversations, steer the conversation towards business. So don't talk about the weather, unless weather is your business. Don't talk about the dog, unless you're a dog groomer. Don't talk about things that are not related to the business. It saves time and it makes it more efficient. What people love, and they will love you for it, is when you don't waste their time. Only talk about business, only talk about what we can do for each other. Do not talk about other things. Then follow that business process that I just mentioned in my previous slide. Follow this and then think about what you're going to get on your investment. You're putting time in your net, into networking, putting time and effort. It disturbs your day. As an SME like me, a tiny, tiny company in Tower Hamlets, you really haven't got much to give away all the time you're spending on your business. You want the time I spent on, on the networking to work for you equally well. Step number four to becoming a pro networker, make it easy on yourself. Why is this important? This is important because we are such busy people, such, such, busy, such busy people, and we are so exhausted with all this change going on and all the things that need to be doing. If networking is just one of the terrible things that we have to deal with, 
will find every excuse not to do it. I know you know that. Give me a secret nod. Yes, a secret nod, but this is how it is. So making it easy on yourself is as important as every other step of the method. And number five, don't wait. Because when you've done all this, explaining to people what you do, all the listening, all the asking, you follow up, follow, you have the coffee, the networking coffee, and then what? And then you wait. What's going to happen next? Well, is it happening? Is it happening? Is it not happening? What is happening? Well, don't wait. Take it into your own hands. And that's when I was saying, make it your own show. It is your own thing to do. So just add, don't wait to it, add that fifth step where you start networking. Find the connections that you said you were going to find, send the link that you said you were going to send, what you agreed during your networking coffee. Start doing it now. How I do it, the same day or the, or the day after, I send an introduction to the connections that I have found for the person that I've networked with. I send an introduction, I copy myself onto it, and I ask to keep me, um, uh, to, uh, keep me in on the progress. I introduce one person to another in a personal way. It's very important to be personal. And I don't wait at all. Immediately, if I, if I haven't got connections, you're probably thinking, what if you have nothing to give? What if there's nothing you can do for the other person, but they are a really, really good person and very, very good to have in your network? What to do? What to do is to send them what they told you they're interested in. Maybe there is an invitation to an event that you are not going to go to, but it would be good for them. Send it out. Connect on LinkedIn. See what they are posting. So these were the, the, the five steps to becoming a pro networker. It is also very important what qualities you need to, to, to display. As a networker, First, of course, you need to be a really energized and nice person that people would want to talk to you. Because if you're standing there looking like, I really don't want to be here. I'll just drink all the terrible cheap wine and go home. I don't want to look at you. Don't talk to me. Don't come here. No, 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 no. I'm just standing here waiting for the time to pass. If you look like that, you're not going to get any networking done. So energized and, and um, interested in what you're doing is very important. Being specific in what you do, in how you explain, uh, how you present yourself, being personal, being genuine, very important that. If you are just smiling and thinking, oh no, I'm really smiling here, but I hate you and I don't want to be here, no one is going to be interested in networking with you. And then be helpful. Of course, businesslike, but helpful. If you find anything or hear anything that would be useful to your connections, send it out. Be that helpful person who reposts and who shares and who comments on posts. That's really, really important. While you are doing your posts, have a look at your own profile. Is this profile a good profile? Does it say what you do? Does it serve your purpose? Have a look at your own profile and do a very important thing, recommendations. Of course, it's important to say on LinkedIn what it is that you do. But when I look at people profiles, I look at what they say about themselves. And that is the profile. And then what people say about you. A recommendation is something that someone has put down, someone who has written having worked with you so to me it's an opinion about you from someone well informed and leaving out recommendations from your profile not taking care of them is a major mistake it's so important to other people how you're being perceived how you helped someone what was it like to work with you so recommendations ask for them and also give them. What they give you, they give you credibility. 
the name of the person appears, people can check what did this really happen. It's very important because it's not the same as your website. Your website just says, this is what I would like you to think about me. Your recommendation says, this is how I actually performed, how good it is what I do. This is fantastic, someone is raving about me. Well, contact more people who you've worked for, who you worked with, who know what you like and ask them to say that on LinkedIn. It's so important. You'll be, you'll be adding the personal touch. You'll be saying how accomplished you are. And the word of mouth is one of the most powerful tools out there. So to sum up my little method, number one, make yourself clear. And if you want to work with me on this, I offer workshops of all kinds, bespoke workshops, in which we can adjust your pitch, we can adjust your LinkedIn profile if you want to do that. I do workshops, uh, just contact me, we'll have details at the end of it. Step number two, follow a precise process. This process in which you know what you are doing at every moment of your network, you know what you're doing. Then do it in a business way. Don't waste time, don't wait waste other people other people's time and make it easy on yourself because you have to repeat it every time you go out it has to be as good as the previous time it is your show you are getting famous for being a good networker number five don't wait start it today if you remember now that you've just talked to someone and you would like to introduce them do it now do it in the next five minutes, just do it and start all, all the process because it is all about time. Networking is done in real time. We are meeting real people. We need to get it rolling. And it's so exciting to be able to be part of that process of creating something, introducing people. You can make someone's day just by introducing them to the right contact not even because of the contact, but because you cared. It's wonderful that someone cares. And in networking, we've got the opportunity to be givers, to show that we care. Don't waste the opportunity. So these are my five steps to becoming a pro networker. If you wanted to check on me, my testimonials are on LinkedIn. That's the link. If you want to contact me for more information or, or for a workshop this is the email and my book is on amazon that's the link here thank you very much for listening